Hey there, my name's Fern, and I'm part of Developer Relations here at GitLab. And today I'm gonna go over how to develop and integrate a custom scanner into GitLab, showing the extensibility of our DevSecOps platform. This is little Oreo. Some of the benefits of extensibility within GitLab are that it enables you to migrate to our DevSecOps platform from separate tools. By allowing you to use those tools with our platform while you complete migration. It also allows you to evaluate third party tools and use them within GitLab. And it allows you to add internal or custom built solutions to our DevSecOps platform. Custom security scanners have the following integration points within GitLab. They can populate the pipeline security view, the merge request widget, vulnerability reports and vulnerability pages, the security dashboard, and they can be integrated with scan result policies. All right, now let's get started. I'll be going over how I developed the Fern Pattern Scanner Custom Security Scanner and how I can integrate it into another project within GitLab. You can follow along and view these projects yourself by seeing the links in the description. All right, so let's go over the Fern Pattern Scanner. This is a custom secret scanner I've developed which searches for particular regex patterns within a GitLab project. So let me go over how this works. So first, I have this Go application I've created that actually performs the scanning. And it's broken up into three parts. The first one is model.go and this contains the structures that are needed to actually go ahead and templatize the application. So you'll see that there is a vulnerability structure. And with this structure, I can go ahead and populate an ID, name, message, description, location, and line of code where the vulnerability was detected. And this is going to be used once I scan the actual um, file it's going to add this data to it depending on what the vulnerability is. And then it's going to use that in order to generate a JSON file to populate the various GitLab um, integration points. If I go back, you can see here there's report.go. And this is what the template looks like for the secret detection schema. So this is using Go template engine and depending on what language you write it in, you don't need to use Go, but you have to make sure that you follow the particular schema for the scanner type you're trying to implement. And what you can do is you can look at the documentation for um, integrating different security scanners, which is available in the links in the description. And you can find the different scan schemas here. And I use the one for secret detection and there'll be a project that you can look at with the different schemas that will show you how to actually um, leverage the schema and integrate it. And then we go ahead and generate that report from that template. We'll generate a JSON and add that to GitLab. Then there's scanner.go which contains the actual logic, which scans through the directory. It has environment variables, so you can specify what paths to exclude, um, what directory to actually scan, etc. So that's built into the actual code. And I'll show you how you can templatize this within GitLab to change this functionality. And what it does is it'll load the, uh, the rules, for what types of regex to scan. And then it'll go ahead and scan the files and then create those structures and populate them with what was detected by the actual scanner. And you can see here that we give it a random ID. We give it a name based off of the name within the rule that we load. And we give it um, that a particular pattern was found. We give it the file it was found in and the position and we use all this to populate that report and then templatize it and generate the JSON. 
Then there's the main.go because we actually need to have a way to actually load this application. And it's just a CLI uh, command line which has the scan function with a couple of different parameters you can pass. So you can set which file you want to use for the rules, the path to scan, and if we want to generate a report or not. And that'll be the entry point to actually run the scanner within our application. So now that we have all that, then we must actually containerize this application. And I've done that by creating a Docker file where I load the dependencies, I actually build the executable. And here, whenever this container is loaded, I run the executable with the scan command and I load it with dash dash report. And just to take a look at the rules that I've defined, these are the regex rules. So it'll populate the report with the different structures, like the name of the vulnerability will be password variation one, and it'll use this regex right here to detect where there's a password variation one. Same thing for another password, for social security numbers, and for private key. And I've created this so you can continuously add different patterns as you need. Then um, what I have to do is I actually have to create a GitLab CI file to run a pipeline where I actually build this container and I load it within the GitLab container registry and I push it there so that way this image can be used throughout um, different projects within GitLab. So now that I've done all that, I'm ready to go ahead and actually um, use this and scan another GitLab project for these secrets. And in order to do that, I need to actually create a template to load this scanner. And the way I do that is I create another GitLab CI YAML file where I load the image that I add to the GitLab CI uh, container registry. And I make sure that I'm loading an artifact that's a report for secret detection and it loads the uh, JSON that I generate by the scanner. And then we extend that by adding additional rules like a flag that if it's disabled, then we don't actually run it. But if it's not disabled, then we run it on the CI commit branch. And the way that it runs it is it just runs the scan command with the rules that are located in this directory and generates a report. And you can customize this so that way you can load different uh, report files and different rules files by configuring and changing these variables. Now let's go ahead and actually perform the integration into the secret list. So I'll go over the different points where we integrate and how that integration can actually be achieved. This project contains a variety of different secrets such as keys, social security numbers, and passwords. If we take a look at clients.json, we can see a bunch of different social security numbers which are classified as personal identifiable information and should not be included in this repository. Now, how do I search for these type of secrets? Well, I need to integrate the Fern pattern scanner into this project. And the way that that's done is by simply including the Fern pattern scanner template into our GitLab CI YAML. We can see this template runs the Fern Pattern Scanner with the scan command and applies the default rules as well as generates a report. Now, if we take a look at the latest run pipeline, we can see the Fern Secret Detection job has been applied. And we can see that it's running the exact command that it specified, the scan command with the default rules and it generates a report. And these are just logs provided by the actual application showing that there are potential vulnerabilities detected. Now let's see the different integration points. If I go back, you can see the security tab is available and it shows all the different secrets detected within our pipeline. 
Let's go to the social security number and we can see a description that was populated by the scanner. Now I just put what type of pattern was detected, but you can do things like extract uh, from a different vulnerability database and use that to populate your results. There's also a location which you can see that it points towards one of the social security numbers within our file. From here, you can also dismiss the vulnerability or you can create an issue to collaborate with different developers and parts of the security team to resolve this at a later time. And note that it will be a confidential vulnerability, meaning that only those with the correct permissions will be able to access it. Similar to the pipeline view, the results of the vulnerability scanner are present within a merge request. Here we can see that secret scanning detected 10 new potential vulnerabilities. And here we have a list like the social security number that's present and it provides similar data such as the description and the location of the file. You can also dismiss this vulnerability with a comment letting the security team know the reason for dismissal. You can also create an issue to further collaborate just like in the pipeline view. Now, it's important to note that here I am scanning everything detected between the feature branch and the main branch. But depending on how you develop your application, you can only scan for the vulnerabilities present in the difference between the feature branch and the main branch, meaning the new vulnerabilities that are introduced. We can also see that we require one approval from secret detection approvals. Now this is part of a GitLab scan result policy I've created, which will require approval if any secret detection vulnerability is present. So here you can see that one of these two members of the security team must approve in order for this to go through. So this merge request is blocked until it receives approval from these two members. This shows the power of GitLab's policy engine and how it can be used with custom scanners. Custom security scanners can also integrate with GitLab's vulnerability report, which allows you to manage and triage all the vulnerabilities present within your main branch. And here we can see all the different vulnerabilities detected within the main branch along with their location. If I click on one such as this password variation one, I can see the same description, I can see the same location, and from here I can also create an issue to work on this later, or I can add to an existing issue, and I can also change the status. So if I've confirmed this, and I know that this is a password that has been checked in, I can go ahead and confirm this, and you can see that the status has been changed to confirmed, and I can write a comment that it was detected within the project and confirmed. And I can save this comment to further collaborate on this vulnerability with the rest of the security team. And finally, our custom secret scanner can be integrated with the GitLab security dashboard, which in the group view shows the vulnerabilities introduced or reduced over time within a 30, 60 or 90 day view. And within our project security status, we can also see it under the F grade secret list because it contains critical vulnerabilities. Once we click on this, we can see all the vulnerabilities introduced and their severity over a 365 day view. Now, since this project was created for demo reasons and has always had vulnerabilities since its inception, there's no change but this graph would go up and down depending on the vulnerabilities which were introduced or removed. And just as an overview, you can see this flowchart on security scanner integration. Now, if a security scanner already provides a GitLab integration, then just simply follow the provided integration steps from the third party scanner tool. If it does not, then check if it emits a report if it does emit a report, then make sure you follow the required GitLab schema for the particular scanner and then add the application to the pipeline of the project you wanted to scan via a template. 
If it does not emit a report, then make sure you add the functionality for it to emit a JSON report following the appropriate schema, create the template as seen in this video, and then you can have your custom scanner populate all these different GitLab integration points. And that's how you develop and integrate a custom scanner within GitLab. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. To learn more about GitLab, visit about.gitlab.com and make sure to hit that subscribe button.